Hey everybody, welcome to DTNS Experiment Week. All this week, DTNS is on vacation, summer vacation. So we handed over the feed to our friends to try some stuff out. Each of them has an experimental podcast idea that they'd like your feedback on. So please send us your feedback, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com or leave your feedback at patreon.com slash DTNS. We'll pass it along to them. And remember, each one of these is their podcast, so they are responsible for the content, but we hope you enjoy it and we'll see you soon. Hey, welcome to the 64-bit field guide. It's our very first show. We're trying something here. Uh, my name is Blair Bazdurich and I am a co-host for This Week in Science Weekly and I am joined today by two of my very best friends. <laughs> Oof, yeah. Hooray. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> what is it to say? Yeah. First is this very special best, best friend. Besties for life. <laughs> no, I'm joined by uh, my husband, Brian. Hi, I'm Brian. I'm a nursing student, and yeah, I'm just pretty in the medical field right now. But I love video games and board games and stuff. Excellent. Especially Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, and we are also joined by Jesse. Hello, I'm Jesse McGrath. I am a high school English teacher, and I co-host the podcast Jesse and Wilder's Guide to Life, which is a catch-all for everything. Excellent. And so we thought it would be super fun to uh, have a, a show where we kind of mix in all of our expertise. Um, so I, on This Week in Science, talk about animals primarily. I am a zoologist by training. I spent a lot of time working with animals. And I think just in general, I really like talking to people about obscure animal facts. And these two, Brian and Jesse, are especially good audience when I bring up some <laughs> very strange animal facts. Hell yeah. And so where that kind of gets interesting is that um, I'm a bit of a more novice gamer, but I'm interested in that kind of stuff and sci-fi and fantasy. And uh, these two are both filled to the brim with uh, lots of knowledge about the obscure and the not so obscure of those worlds. And in those worlds, there's a lot of animal type things, creatures, and we thought it might be fun to see where those two worlds meet. She know? really hesitated when she said knowledge. Yeah, I know. <laughs> But there, it's like you she's know. looking for a different word and was yeah. like, I guess knowledge. Was knowledge, yeah. experience, yeah. both, I guess. Yeah. Ne neither? No. no, no. <laughs> um, great. So this is the 64-bit field guide. We are going to start with the world of Pokemon, our pocket monsters, right? Isn't mm -hmm. that? Yeah. So okay. Good. <laughs> yeah, direct <laughs> translation. Oh, so... hold on. We got an expert. <laughs> So I definitely have very little experience with Pokemon. I did not watch the show. Oh, missed I out. did not oh. play the card game. I did not play any of the video games. So okay. like in the shortest version, what would I need to know before we get into some Pokemon in particular? I always get the timelines mixed up. Mm. It started as the Game Boy game or the cards and then the anime came after. I think the Game Boy game was first. Okay, that's because what I thought too. I, and the anime is like loosely based because then when they made okay. uh, Pokemon Yellow, which yes. there's three, I, I think three original Pokemon games. It was Pokemon Red, Pokemon Blue, and then they made a Pokemon Yellow, which followed the show a little more closely, mm -hmm. um, where like Pikachu was your starter Pokemon. Yes. Because you, you have mm -hmm. three normally you start with. It's either Squirtle, uh, Charmander, or Bulbasaur. Um, you don't get Pikachu until later in the game in the original. Oh, interesting. Okay. And so... So they're fighting each other. Yes. But so uh, this, is, this is part of what I don't understand. Like, was it are Pokemon the wild animals in this reality? Yeah. Yes. And so, who, how, when did they start getting captured in these balls? Like, oh, they were all yeah. over. It seems like always only one Pokemon game, to my knowledge, and I, I'm definitely like watched the OG anime, but mm -hmm. have not watched anything right, in, right, uh, right, uh, recent. It only kind of addresses the icky part of it, like, one time. And I think that was <laughs> oh, right. black and white, maybe? Or I think you're right. It was either that or Pearl and Diamond. Yeah. But I think it was black and white. Yeah. And the whole thing was that the enemies of that, uh, big air quotes, uh, yeah. were, their whole thing was like, we should free all the Pokemon because we're holding them captive. Right. And your job as the protagonist of that game was like, but we're friends. <laughs> right. We, we're making best friends. Yes. And I think they okay. established that right away. That, like, you're supposed to be yes. best friends. Friends every... till the end. It's right. like in the song, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and so... <laughs> you're trying to sing this yeah. song. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's in there somewhere. To train them is my cause. Yeah. <laughs> well, teach me. Well, you'll teach me. I'll teach yeah. you. Well, Pokemon, this... right. Yeah. <laughs> 
But so, like, in terms of the ecology of the Kanto region is where you start, right? Yeah, right. Like, wh- why hasn't it collapsed because all of the Pokemon are being captured? There's still a lot. Well, cause it's, yeah, oh, they're, yeah, there's still so many. Yeah, okay. they're yeah. basically, I, I think, and this is, I could be way wrong on this one, but I think they truly, as you pointed out earlier, they truly replace wild animals in general. So every mm-hmm. wild animal is a Pokemon. So it's like, no matter how many people are doing it, and not everybody is doing it, there's mm-hmm. only, like, a certain few that have kind of, like, oh, I'm going to catch these mm-hmm. and, and be the okay. very best like no one ever was. Yeah, because I was just thinking about, like, their their role in nature. If right. I went and I captured right. every turkey vulture yeah. in, a, in a ball in suspended animation right. <laughs> to fight for me, yeah. um, then there'd be carcasses everywhere. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. So it's and, I mean, just there a few are, of them. There are quite a few. There's bee Pokemon that I feel like fill a lot of the like pollination, but they're so numerous. They're as numerous as regular bees. I feel like to some degree, even though they're okay. they're Tough the size. Of, I think we are running out of months? bees. Yeah, yeah. in real life. Oh, crumbs, right. <laughs> well, we've been we've been catching them all. Too many and, and got fighting too many. them. Yeah, I think <laughs> this yeah. is the core of Blair's question. Yeah. But it's still one per pokeball like yes. you have one bee yes, in yes. there yeah that's wild yeah. yes okay but also the bee like uh, the bee eventually evolves into a, a creature that's as big as a man so it's a yeah. little different so, okay thing. so great so that was the other thing i was <laughs> right. talking about was evolution because uh, that word it's being Goose, used for sure. has always bothered me because mm-hmm. that's okay. not how evolution works sure but so they morph right as they grow yeah. mm-hmm. basically less, yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's they're more like uh, metamorphosis Right. The, yes, okay. and the but it's tricky is that it's not just as they grow. I mean, grow is correct, but mm-hmm. it's like the way that it functions in the game, which is kind of the core text, is they have to earn it. Right. It's not like a. I mean, like it's a, like XP and D and D. Yes, okay. exactly. Right. right. Yeah. So so it doesn't just like happen like oh my Pikachu turned ten so now it's a Raichu. It's like no, if your Pikachu sucks, it just is always a Pikachu and never turns into a Raichu. <laughs> well, see, that's a tricky one because right. now we're getting real deep. You got to use a stone to right. make that Ooh. one thing. Yes, uh, many of them yeah. need extra. And now, yeah. now in the games, there's wild business where yes. it's like to evolve this one, you have to defeat a Steel type Pokemon at night oh, with yeah. that Pokemon, and then he will or it will turn into the next form. So it has okay. almost nothing. It yeah. is almost like just pure random circumstance rather than growth right. or XP or anything. Okay. To that point, there yes. are sort of elements assigned to each Pokemon for like, we've been using Pikachu, so that's an electric type yes. of, of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, the other, you know, there's fire, there's ghost, there's like all... Heart. Yeah, right. heart, right. Okay. <laughs> Wind, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And okay, so the other general question I have before we get into Pikachu. So they talk, they say their name? Is yes. that the only thing they say? Uh, well, <laughs> so it's tough. First of all, some of them I feel like don't say their name. They just go, Argh. right, right. <laughs> they have like a little call. Yeah. And yeah. then in the anime, Meowth speaks like a human. Yeah, so Meowth is a cat Pokemon, a small cat Pokemon that speaks Success with coins. 100% like a human. Is that the one? Like that, a Brooklyn, does that one I feel like human, yes. like a New Yorker. Yes. To the character that's in Super Smash Brothers that looks like a super yoked cat. No, it? no, that's a no. that's a that's, that's a, like a fire. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's okay. a fire one. That's Meowth? a pig, also, I believe. What? <laughs> Incineroar. Uh, yes, also, but then there is a. I think there's a fire cat one that turns oh, into a yes, big buff yes, cat. Oh yes, 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 yes. You're yeah. right. You're right. You're right. Um, th- that's. The, I, think, I mean, if we're gonna get if we're gonna get real nasty, this is what's, what's grossing me out about modern Pokemon is they all look like humans. I don't know why they keep what? doing that. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> okay, well, now we're getting outside. Yeah, 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 we're getting, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're getting okay. real deep. Uh, also, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say, yeah, Meowth turns into another, a, a more cat-looking cat. But still speaks fluent English. We, that one never evolved, so I don't know. I think that's the fear is if it does evolve, he would lose He his, would lose it. Yeah. Because he does, yeah. They change, they sort of change fundamentally. I mean, they, they learn a new word and forget the old word, right? Mm-hmm. Like oh, they, they use their yeah, okay. they have a new name. Like Squirtle is not saying Squirtle has a war turtle. He's yeah. just saying war like. And so, I, I think he's a turtle. That's my yeah. question. Like, is right. is the is their name? Are they saying their name, or is their name the sound they make? Oh, that's interesting. I think the name. I want to say the name is the sound they make. Okay, so it's as if you called it a guess. cow a moo. Right. That's tough because. Well, yeah, that's the it's only tough. sound they make, but, like most of the time. But like war turtle is a great example of like. Turtle sounds like turtle, and he looks like a turtle. Right. So that feels like someone named it, but then that's also assuming that they would know what turtles look like. Right. Which they don't. They don't. Right. Which so much of their <laughs> yeah. naming convention comes from our right. stuff. Um, <laughs> so it's tough. But that's right. a good question. I had yeah. never thought of that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's get into it. So our first animal we're going to talk, or Pokemon, creature. not an animal, creature. A critter. Crit- yeah. crit- <laughs> crit- <laughs> um, cute, cute little critter. Sure. Is uh, Pikachu. So tell me about Pikachu. 
Well, he's an electric mouse. I think that's the that's the crux of it. Straightforward. Uh, as far as the uh, description right, goes. Right, okay, so so we think he's based off a mouse. But see, yeah. my whole life I assumed he was based off a of pika. That would make more sense. Yeah. However, <laughs> it's not that we think in the Pokedex it says mouse Pokemon. Yeah. Okay. So, the, yeah. so which is another thing. They're, then they must have real animals. Yes. Because the Pokedex indicates mouse Pokemon. Right. And the Pokedex then, is, like, a, is something that is that is like rat. in canon. Like Ash oh, yes. uses yes, 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 the yes. Pokedex. Every iteration of Pokemon, anime, game, whatever, uh -huh. has a, a big ledger. I see. And half of the job of the, the protagonist is to fill the ledger. Right. Oh. And it'll it gotta catch them all, you, you gotta say. gotta catch them all, okay. correct. Um, and so they <laughs> must have mice because right. it's calling it a mouse Pokemon. So well, I think they have real animals too. Yeah, like Ratatat is sort of looking like, he looks like a mouse too. But he's so, a rat. But he, On yeah, account of the name? name is a rat. <laughs> right. No, you're right. I mean, it, the thing is, okay, so not to get too deep, but the dark part is what do they eat if, if Pokemon have replaced all animals? Right. What do they eat? They gotta. Eat, they have to be eating Pokemon. Yeah. Or yeah, they're, eating Pokemon, or they're sure. eating a different animal that we don't really see. Yeah. See, so I don't know. So this gets into some of the animals that I wanted to talk about yes, related please. to Pikachu. So I first wanted to talk about Pikas because that was always my assumption because of the name. Right. Makes sense. But there's a few problems with that. So I would say that Pikachu looks a lot like a Pika in the face, which mm -hmm. is basically just the cutest mouse you've ever seen. Right. Um, but Pikas don't have a tail. Mm. And I know that's, like, a pretty big deal with Pikachu. Pikachu has such a tail. <laughs> such a tail. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a, it's like a bolt of lightning, yeah. basically. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. okay. Um, they live at very high elevations, and, uh, they're related to rabbits. They're, um, related to lagomorphs. Um, they have a high-pitched alarm call. Is that something that Pikachu has? I, I'm talking about his Pika. voice is yeah. His voice <laughs> yeah. is pitched. Yeah, yeah, and it pitches up when he's doing like a, an electrical attack. He yeah. He will he'll scream part of his name. Yes, but sometimes it comes down in timber. I feel like You're it's like, right. Pika. Like it yeah. gets deeper. It gets yeah. deeper, deeper yeah, 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 a second. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there is voice changing technology in Pikachu. Right. So it feels. Similar. Okay. Yeah, I can see right, that. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I guess also, you know, it's very much like, you know, there's a lot of communication when, and if, if, I figure like if this critter is getting bothered, mm -hmm. he's going to say his name in a different way to let, to, as a warning. So that seems. Right. Sure. Yeah. Like there's something to all it. Right. Yeah, something to it. So yeah. then let's talk about the mouse of it all, because mm -hmm. what characteristics would you say that Pikachu has as an, if you were going to call it an animal? Like, so commands electricity. Mm-hmm. In it and stores it in his cheeks, which is really in odd. His, oh, is that why he has those yeah. red cheeks? Mm -hmm. Yes, that is one of his one of the. Yeah, they'll crackle. Yeah, one of the bit, defining yeah. features <laughs> is that he stores his electricity in his cheeks. Oh my goodness! Um, even though he doesn't look it, I think canonically he's very quick. Yeah, he quick yeah, yeah, attack. Yeah. Yes. he does a lot of darting around. Yep. Okay, that's a mousy uh, thing for yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah, dodging attacks. I think is one of, especially in the cartoon and stuff, was one of his big things. Yes. Like, okay. Is he quadrupedal? Both. Yes. He often, yeah. like, when he when it's chill mode, it feels like he's He'll bipedal. Yes. Yeah, he's, yeah. like, like wants to fit in with Ash. Yeah. But in battle mode, he drops down to all fours a lot. He's much oh, faster that way. Yes, and it's, yeah, he's much faster. Yeah. Okay. But he does... Much like me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. I've seen it happen. Yeah. 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 Way faster. <laughs> um, he does... See, this is the weird part. Does Pikachu have opposable thumbs? And I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, I the, right. uh, yeah, but his his thumbs are his yeah. hands are tucked in. We have an amiibo real, that real we're cute. looking at. Yeah. Yeah. we have a model we're referring to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the science community, Blair. We have a Pikachu yeah. oh, in the lab yeah. right now yeah. with us. So as far as mice go, he's cute. He's fast. He's quadrupedal. He has a tail. Other than him being called a mouse in his description, I don't know if I would assign any mouse traits to him. Okay, great. So then let me get to the the one that I really wanted to yes. connect. Yeah. Electric eel. Yeah. yeah. Now we're talking. That feels now good. we're in it. That feels positive. Uh, so just some fun things I found out about electric eels. I don't know if you guys knew. Um, oh, I'd love to hear. The discovery of the electric eel inspired the invention of the first battery. Oh, yeah. That's cool. That's because really cool. they figured out the way they're doing it, sodium ion channels, very similar to how they make batteries. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we could get very deep in the weeds on that, but I just thought that was a neat anecdote. They're not actually a true eel. They're related to catfish. They're not related to eels. They can't see very well at all, but they actually have what's called a lateral line in their um, jaw, which so they can sense electricity as well neat. as... 
dispel it. I like that. So they're sensing movement in the water. They're, they could sense uh, heartbeats. Do they from, use that to like avoid predators? And to hunt also. Cool. Yes. Very cool. Um, they can be up to six feet long. Mm. <laughs> and they have three separate electric organs. So they can do um, a low voltage, a medium voltage, and a high voltage. Shot. That's really cool. That's neat. Now, do you know how many volts you'd get if you stuck your finger in an outlet? Oof. Oh, 1,300. It's 120. Oh, I was way off. (laughs) (laughs) You've heard of 120 volt, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now that you mention it. (laughs) You said that so confidently, though, that you were like, oh, 1300. Yes, I know of this. Man. Um, That was cool. Yeah. Electric (laughs) eels can do up to 600 volts. Wow. And the other thing that I thought was maybe similar, you can tell me, to Pikachu is that they can actually leap out of the water and deliver electric shocks. Well, he I mean, can. That's his whole thing. He does yeah. jump in. He I does thought jump he was a jumping yes. guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think he may appear to be like a mouse, but I think he's he's more of an electric eel. If we want to, <sighs> I like that. Yeah, <laughs> I think. Um, I do want to go back to this. You said it was helped invent batteries. Yes. Mm-hmm. Good on that scientist, because. If a thing shocked me, I think, first of all, I'd go, <laughs> and yeah. throw it back yeah. into the water. Yeah. Right from once again. Uh, but two, it seems way more in line with all of the old-timey science we know about, that they would be like, well, let's get these things in our house. Yeah. yeah. Like, let's, yeah. let's get their electricity and put it here. Yeah. Electric yeah. fish? Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. put this in my phone or it Sells whatever. itself. Yeah. 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 The the one thing I think that where this kind of falls apart though is I think he has a weakness, right? Isn't that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. One of his, one of his weaknesses, uh is water. Right, which if you're an electric eel, that's your whole thing. That's your whole is thing. Is water. Yeah, yeah. But also, I think that is strange because water is conductive. So he should like water. Wait, his weakness isn't water, is it? I thought it was water. No, he water is weak to him. Hmm. Uh, his weakness is uh, ground, correct? Oh, ground? Oh, yes. <laughs> like rock, <laughs> rock touch. Yeah, oh, yeah. I was way off. But there's, there's 1,300? Yeah. Water? I mean, oh, said it, and I was like, Louise. I think he maybe knows something I don't know. But yeah, his on like the original card and in the game, but a, I, mo- I, a lot of electric or... Uh, I, so I, I took, I took issue with that was word, out. ground, except that's what you do to electricity right. is you right. ground it. Yes. So right. actually, never mind, Pokemon, you're you're on it. Yeah. Don't yeah. add us, by the way. If you're listening to this and you're like, <laughs> their Pokefacts are wrong, like, yeah. hey, man, put that in your pocket. I don't know what you're telling <laughs> you. There's so many of them. We're yeah. trying over here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so do you feel like it's a fuzzy electric eel? Do you think that works? For... Certainly more than a mouse. Okay. Oh, definitely. Yeah, okay. I mean... One of them could produce electricity, and the other one is real <laughs> cute sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like his whole thing. Yeah. Wait, can I, I have a couple. Can I, oh, yeah. Can Please. I give you a couple Pika facts? Yeah. Oh, I would love it. So, first of all, there was supposed to be a third evolution of Pikachu. Do you guys know this? <gasps> okay, so what's the second one? Raichu. Which is the little baby one from Super Smash Bros.? Pichu. So, what's the deal with that? Yeah, well, that one's a good one. Uh, It's. It's they, a retcon. Th- yeah, for it's sure. yeah. They, okay. they can just like introduce. It's like I mean, a three quarters level. Kind of. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah baby. Pika. Right. If, um, if they tried to make Pikachu cuter, which come on. Come on. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> um, so, Pikachu turns into Raichu. Uh huh. A lot of people refuse to evolve it because you need the stone, like yeah. you said. Yeah. Um, because Pikachu's the mascot. Why would you yeah. want to change it? Now yeah. it looks different. He's like a darker color. He's perfect as is. He's a little. Yeah. He's like yeah, orange, yeah. right? Uh, a more like, like a, yeah, kind of a brown. Brown orange. Yeah, yeah, brown. Yeah. Um, but they didn't know when they came out with the game that he was going to be the mascot. Mm-hmm. So that's part of it. Yeah. Uh, he was supposed to have a third evolution, Gorochu. <laughs> oh. Okay. And it got cut. Because of cartridge size for the Game Boy. That makes sense. They were just like, we don't think we're going to have enough room. Yeah. Cut this third Pikachu. Yep. Which is seems what? nuts now that yeah. he's the mascot, that that would be one of the things that yeah. got trained. Right. Um, but I have a better Pikachu fact. Well, oh, that's a really good one it. already. It's, I love that I one. I love that one. I love that one. Cartridge uh, this is a This is a quote that I found on Wikipedia, so I guess fact check it if you'd like. <laughs> uh, the, the American staff responsible for bringing Pokemon Red and Blue, which were the initial games, mm-hmm. to the United States initially pitched to the team to redesign the, quote, cute Pokemon in order to appeal to American audiences. Of course, suggested redesign on Pikachu was described by the head of Pokemon Inc. Mm-hmm. as, uh, quote, Something like a tiger with huge breasts. <laughs> it looked oh. like a character from the musical Cats. No. Uh, now we are talking. Rum Tum Tugger yes. is a heck of a cat. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. Uh, sorry, I just had to. That's I saw great. that last night. It was like this is no. That's great because I almost brought a bunch of cat facts trying to see if Pikachu was a cat. Mm-hmm. And, and his villain in the anime was a cat. Right. I mean, the, the, that's, yeah, you're the right. One that could speak full sentences. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Uh, wow. All right, let's move on to uh, the animal, or the Pokemon that you decided to bring. Oh, Paris. Paris is... How do we spell Paris? So it's P-A-R-A-S. Paras. Definitely yeah. thought it was... Yeah. Petty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, there's a few Pokemon that are real sad. Uh, this is one of them to me <laughs> that really bums yeah. me out. It's it's a cute little crab-looking critter uh it's got like it's got six legs Mm -hmm. uh two of them are they have like little sharp they look like they should be claws but they're not they're just little they look like they're you're they're like yeah they're claws and not pincers is what i mean to say Mm -hmm. um and he has little mushrooms on his back super cute he evolves or you know metamorphite metamorphosis 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 (laughs) metamorphosis Metamorphos. I yeah, metamorphos. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. He turns into a sort of a more of a crab, but the mushroom on its back gets way bigger. And uh, in the description, it completely takes over his body. So, so is he this just... parasect? Is that yeah. What you're yeah parasect so his is eyes are vacant. Yes. Right. <gasps> so it completely drains almost all oh, the nutrients no. out of its uh, its host. This mushroom does. Is there and... a third one? Or... No, mm-hmm. just those. There's the only mushroom two. Is fully in control. Then. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. There, are there a lot of Pokemon with only two? Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, I thought there were always three. No, some no, don't no, have yeah. any of all of it all. Right. They're just oh. one. Yep. So why did you want to talk about this one? Just because this one's always, since I've started playing Pokemon, this one always kind of hurt my heart. <laughs> <laughs> this We just had a, we had a critter that like mm-hmm. looked so, I mean, it was so, it's such ha- a happy looking cute guy. And then it turns into like a, a piloted, a mushroom piloted corpse, which is really... Come well, I have, I, have some, I have some bad news for you. What? <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in the animal kingdom like this. Man, that sucks. what if there wasn't, yeah. though? <laughs> so, um, first, uh, I'm going to address the fact that, obviously, it's called Paris because of Parasite. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. So, there are different types of relationships between animals they're uh, sim- symbiosis, right? So there's mutualism. That's where we both benefit. Mm-hmm. There's commensalism. One benefits more than the other, but the other one's not hurt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then there's parasitism, which is when one is hurt and one is helped, right? Mm-hmm. And so parasitism is tough because if you are too good at it, then your host dies and then you don't have the benefits of being in this mm-hmm. relationship anymore. So you have to be kind of, you have to be an ineffective parasite to be the best parasite. Mm-hmm. Like you have to make it take a long time to mm-hmm. kill your host basically. So um, that's why like COVID, for example, it's not a parasite, but this is true for diseases too. It like started changing into these different variants. It became less deadly mm-hmm. and that's by design. So it can actually Reproduce spread better spread, yeah. because if you die of COVID, then you can't cough on somebody. Anymore. Right. It sounds very, that's very dark, but, um, but that's how, that's how diseases spread. And the same thing is true for parasites. They want to kind of leech off, <laughs> leech mm. off, um, of their host as long as possible. So a couple things came to mind here. Uh, zombies, which we talk about mm. on yeah. this week in science all the time, because, it's a, a kind of a burgeoning area of study because it's hard to tell which bees are being parasitized. It's actually by a fly, they're called zombie flies is their common name. And they lay their eggs in the body of a bee and the larva slowly eat the flight muscles of the bee. Oh, wait, how do they get to the bee? They... Yeah, bee got a weapon. <laughs> yeah, bee got a whole... Two weapons sometimes. You land yeah. on their back. Oh, just oh that's the secret the of the yeah. Yeah. Well, if they're eating pollen, yeah. they're too busy getting yeah. drunk on pollen. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so the, the, the eggs are laid inside the body of the bee... The larvae eat the muscles of the bee slowly, which, like, they're not real muscles. Basically, like, the piston network Mm -hmm. in there, Mm. inside the exoskeleton. Um, And so the bees start to act more and more disoriented. They have trouble moving around. They start walking in circles. Eventually, they have trouble standing. And they often abandon their hive. And so there's all this kind of research going into figuring out why they'd abandon their hive. Yeah. Um, It might be that the bees are trying to protect the other bees. Oh. Auto. Or it could be that they're just, their brain, they're losing it yeah, and yeah. they don't know where they're going. Yeah. So those are zombie flies. That's based on a fly. But I think the thing that this is most like is 
the whole last of us of it all, mm-hmm. mm. which is the parasitic fungus. There's a few different kinds, but one of them is cordyceps, which is exactly what the last of us is right. about. Right. Yeah. And so uh, parasitic fungus, there's a few of them, but the one that you usually hear about is mostly ants and some spiders, which is actually what I think Paris looks a lot like yeah. originally is more like a spider yeah. and then looks more like a crab later. Um, and so they infect the ant or the spider and then the they leave where where they're supposed to be. So with with the case of ants, they actually they're tree, tree dwelling ants, and they go down to the forest floor where it's more humid and hot, so that the fungus can grow better. And eventually they bite down on the underside of a leaf, and their jaw locks in that position, oh. and then they just slowly uh, get devoured from the inside out by this fungus until it erupts from their head and releases <gasps> spores. <laughs> yeah, that's a roughie. Yeah, oh, so. Oh, oh. It's, it's a bummer, but hey, that's nature. Yeah. Nature's gross sometimes. Um, but I, I do think that's exactly what this is. It's a mushroom, right? So yeah. it's a fungus. Yeah. And uh, it's growing on his head, and he's slowly going more and more vacant. That's interesting, because there's a, there's a little bit of a flip-flop on that one. Uh, because, like, Paris is, and I think Parasex, I think they're primarily cave-dwelling. Mm. And mm-hmm. they, uh, from what I was, from my research, uh, what I was reading is that they're... They actually, like, a bunch of parasects, the, the, the later evolution that, you know, the pilots, basically, will completely devour a tree by latching onto it mm. and just sucking its their nutrients there out of go. the tree. So, yeah, that's, that's like, pretty, the opposite of what that... Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so I, it seems like if, if we could get um, Mr. Pokemon on the phone... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> James Pokemon, please. Yes, James... <laughs> I think that he would say that this was this was the inspiration, mm-hmm. most likely. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty direct. Really bummer. Yeah. There is like a, especially in the original 151 Pokemon, there is like a few, it feels like there was a team and like Daryl was just in the lab with yeah. the darkest, yep. just coming up. The, a lot of them were just like, this one looks like a turtle, but it's cuter and right. has a water gun. Yeah. And then yeah. this guy's like... This one, the Cubone, yeah, say it, dude. Tell him, uh, tell the listeners. Like, where's a skull? Where's his mom's skull? Where's his mom's skull? As a helmet mm-hmm. mask, yeah. situation, yeah. and uses like her femur as a weapon. I think so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything in the animal kingdom for that. No, <laughs> yeah, I don't think. I didn't think I was like spoiling a future episode, yeah. but that is brute. That's more like Mad Max, right? Oh, situation. Uh, so yeah, it feels like there was just one guy on the on the Game Freak team Yikes. who really put the freak in Game Freak. Yeah. <laughs> Was there anything else you wanted to talk about with Paris? I think you kind of covered a lot of the, like, sad magic of Paris is the fact that, like, this particular parasite doesn't kill Parasect or whatever. It it just sucks out all the nutrients. And I apparently, <laughs> apparently if you remove the mushroom, this Pokemon wouldn't die. It just stops moving completely. So it's really, mm. it's, yeah, it's very much a just keep them... Man, how did that come up in this children's Keep game? Keep them just so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, there's a lot. I think they bet they bet a lot on the kids not reading. Not reading. the Because oh. yeah, that's all optional. It's like yeah. you go into you the definitely, Pokedex, yeah. click through, and it's like a little dark paragraph. Not even yeah. a paragraph, two sentences. Yeah. Is there any, uh, to your knowledge, the thing that's so interesting about Paris and Parasect to me is that it is a species that is defined by this, like, mm-hmm. takeover. Like, it exists as... And, seemingly gets its power, like it has powers like Spore. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. From this. Right. Is there another, is there an animal in the animal kingdom where it's like, we only know it as this thing that is corrupted or infected or, mm. or a vessel for another thing? I mean, the closest I could say, and again, please don't get in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, is lichen. Lichen is a symbiotic relationship okay. between um, algae and... Mm, I respect you so much for not just Googling it. Yeah. I this will is, Google it. No, I mean, you don't have to. I'm no, saying, I'm like, going this is great. to. I would just Google it and pretend the yeah. audience, you know, just like you knew. So, lichen, uh, a fungus and algae. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so, fungus and algae, they are um, a symbiotic relationship. They cannot survive without each other. Okay. And so, that, there's also, like, depending how deep you want to get into this rabbit hole we have a bunch of bacteria in our stomachs that can't survive without us. Mm-hmm. And we cannot eat what we eat without right. them. Yes. Right? So, like, there's different varying levels of symbiosis. But I think in terms of specifically parasitism, there probably are, but I can't really 
think of any. Yeah, yeah. Well, you mean, off the like, top of my head. I feel like you 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 were telling me about like mitochondria too. Like the, well, the mitochondria started like the complex. Of the cell. Yes, the com- the powers of the cell was its own uh, microorganism. That's how you ended up with with animal cells, eukaryotic cells. It was a big cell eating a small cell, and then they lost functionality, and then. There's, that's why I think symbi- symbiosis is so interesting. Like, there's entire birds that they get all of the food that they eat from eating bugs off of the backs of rhinos. They can't survive without them. But again, those are uh, beneficial relationships. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of parasite relationships, there are plenty of parasites that can't survive without a host. But I don't think there's a lot of hosts that only exist with the parasite. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great. So we've done two Pokemon. So I think if... If we continue on with the show, I think the the intention would be that we do two from either Pokemon or some kind of large uh, franchise mm. related to gaming, and then we'll do one sci-fi fantasy related thing. Like, we could go into the world of Dungeons and Dragons mm. oh, or yeah, yeah. Uh, The Hobbit mm-hmm. or anything like that. But um, So today, we are going to talk about... Jesse, what did you bring? Shai Halud. <laughs> mm, uh, sandworms from Dune. Mm-hmm. And but it's, uh, fictional sandworms. I mean, yeah. By extension in general. But yeah, haven't read the books. Just want to, again, <laughs> don't at me. If we're talking about it, you're like, um, actually, <laughs> Francis Herbert said, I don't, I super think that's cool that you love it. I, You could leave me out of it, though. I think there's just a bunch of neat stuff with them. Yeah, yeah a, lot so, of, a lot going on. I saw the first part of the most recent Chalamet Doom. Yep. Um, but I haven't seen Tune Oof. yet. Oh, Tune. So... <laughs> gotta catch Tune. <laughs> we gotta be Tune. Um, so, tell me about the Shahulud. Yeah. Uh, they are a big big old stankin' worm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, um, how big? It's, I guess, like, if you dipped a skyscraper over, it seems like. I don't have okay. a... Feels like I don't it. have yeah. dimensions on it. Well, the um, fact they ride them, right? And they, yes. and they look so tiny. Yes, right. Um, I don't know that there is a, a comparable animal, like a real animal in right. size. Um, I know that a big inspiration for Herbert when writing them was dragons. Um, mm. oh, and so like some ways that that appears is that like the native people, rega- they have the, the worms in high regard. They call them like existence of God mm-hmm. on their planet. Where mm-hmm. you're like, look at this amazing, mm-hmm. huge thing. We have to respect it, right? So they're they're really honking large. They can ride them. Uh, their larva creates spice, which is like the whole thing in this story, mm-hmm. and it like serves as like a drug and also fuel. Yeah. Um, there's also you guys haven't seen Tune yet, mm, but uh, no spoilies. I don't know if you know about the. <laughs> <laughs> Just turn the show off. Uh, so. I don't. I don't know if you know about the like life water or the water of life. But that no. comes from, like, a juvenile worm, so we get to see, like, a little oh, baby worm. I want to see that baby um, And it's, like, venom or poison, one of the two. Okay, all right. Um, and uh, venom is like... injected. Poison okay. is ingested. Okay, so it's, then it must be poison. Well, they, we ingest it, but they're ingesting it, without getting too much into tune, <laughs> they're ingested, we are ingested, the humans ingest it by choice. Okay. I don't know what the worm is. Where it are comes from? It. Yes. In the worm? Yes, yes, yes. They're, like, pulling it out. And they ride them, uh, and so yeah. The original dragon comparison was that like they are this huge mythical beast that some people respect and some people fear, but either way is a danger. And they are protecting their their you know cache of treasure, but their treasure is the spice. Right. And so the whole back and forth in that series, of course, is that like humans are trying to harvest the spice because it's so valuable, and the whole thing is that the worms are always pushing back. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and do the worms eat people? They. Do, but I, but I don't know if that's how they. I don't think that's how they receive nourishment. I don't think that right. would make sense. They're so ti- we're yes. so tiny. Yes, um, it is more of a get off my land type of yes. relationship. So what are they eating? Do you know? I do not know. That's okay. a great question. All right, maybe just it, sand. It feels like yeah, <laughs> could, could be just sand. Because because then the larvae are pooping out the spice. Is that the deal? It is a byproduct of the larvae. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's explicitly poop. Okay. <laughs> But it is... It's gotta be, right? I must be. It feels like it's poop, probably. Unless it's yeah. like... Okay. What if it's like an afterbirth? Or maybe they're oh. not... I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's gotta be poop because it's, it comes out as dust. Which would make sense if they're eating <laughs> dirt. What are you pooping like? <laughs> well, I... I mean, <laughs> Just... If I ate dirt, I would be pooping out dust. But <laughs> I'm gonna Google what did the shark eat. Okay. okay, great. <laughs> um, okay, so they're giant. They uh, can move through sand. Mm-hmm. They sense vibrations. That's a thing, Correct. right? Yes. Um, they poop out spice. 
Um, <laughs> their babies poop out the spice. Their babies yeah. poop out the spice. They so they have a larval form. Does the larva look a lot like the adults? Yeah. Yes. And like when we see it in the second one, it is like probably this about the size of an eel. Like it's very small. Oh okay. um, wow. Relative to the yeah yeah. I can't wait to watch that one. I know. <laughs> the eternal thing is what they call it, or the grandfather of the desert. Oh, so way cooler than yeah, the sun. I love that. Okay. Um, they eat uh, seaweed and animal matter that washes up on beaches. But it's a dust planet, I thought. Maybe there's, a, I guess there's some some drink there. Yeah, there mm-hmm. must be. But that was the whole, don't, they have to wear the suits. And... Yeah. Well, you see vegetation and animal life on Arrakis. They eat that, but they're like, this says the worms might be up to 400 meters in size. 400 meters. Feels hard to feed that. Yeah, sand plankton. Sand plankton. Okay, got it. No. All right. They made it up. Sure, that <laughs> got it. Right. They, they, yeah. they made right. up this fictional character. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, interesting. So I wasn't sure which way to go with this, so this is what I have. The inspiration, I know, is partially from... Um, sandworms or bristle worms. There's also these things called king ragworms that uh, can burrow through wet sand and mud. But I know these guys are dealing in dry sand. There's really, it's hard to find much that lives in dry sand on our planet. Mm-hmm. Worms in general can get up to the, the longest ever recorded was 22 feet. That was an African giant earthworm. Wow. Yuck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 22 is nuts. Yeah. Um, you know what the girth on that guy was? No, I don't. <laughs> also 22 feet. No, it probably <laughs> wasn't cube. that wide. I bet it I bet it was like yeah. very long and not that thick. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, because of the way earthworms are. But the average for the, that species is closer to 10 feet, which is still crazy long <sighs> yeah. for a worm. Yeah. Birds drum on the ground to make worms come up to eat them. Oh, so they were so that's legit. Yeah, they use the, the drum. The, yeah. the little dance that they do mm-hmm. seems legit. And there are lots of worms that actually do have some sort of quote-unquote teeth. So, like, mm. the crazy popcorn bucket mouth. <laughs> oh, <we> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, Brian suggests I, I, I talk about nematodes for a hey, second. now we're talking. Yes. The reason <laughs> they're interesting is that, aside from having bilateral symmetry, which means you can, like, cut them down the middle, like us, right? Mm-hmm. We're, we, you could cut me down the middle, and I'd have similar structures on either side, right? Mm-hmm. Be real sad about it. Yeah, yeah of tough. course. Yeah, it'd be tough. <laughs> Hard to finish the show that way. Uh, um, but in, for their mouth, they have three or six lips with teeth along the inside. <sighs> so they look pretty gnarly. Here's uh, uh, here's some pictures of nematodes. So you can talking. see that they they do look quite a bit like. Oh, they have that. They the have shy that hulled. infinite teeth-looking thing. Yes. Yeah. And nematodes are related uh, to tardigrades, so that's part of why mm-hmm. they have that kind of tardigrade sucker face. Yeah. And nematodes can get up to three feet long, so, you know, pretty big for a worm. Lampreys, I think, are, are a very close fit mouth-wise uh, because they have, uh, they're a jawless fish that have this kind of, like, spike, infinite spike whirl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That looks probably a lot like the... Yeah. The shy halud. Mm-hmm. And they feed by boring into flesh uh, and eating either the flesh or the blood. That's yeah. that good parasitism. But what I really wanted to talk about because of the spice situation was the sea cucumber. Yes. So sea cucumbers, not as gnarly looking as any of the things I just mentioned, but they do have a mouth surrounded by tentacles and they can get up to 10 feet long, although I've never seen the like. Mm. And they can poop out clean sand. So basically, they eat detritus. They Interesting. They eat just muck. But they, w- most of the sand that you stick your little tootsies in on the beach has been through a sea cucumber. Uh, they are responsible for cleaning the sand that we enjoy on our beaches. So the fact that they have this very clear function in the ocean where they contribute this uh, clean sand made me think about the spice mm-hmm. and how like the shy halud larva is doing this very, I'm, I'm just going to assume it's a, it's a, it, they, that they poop it out. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, but so that, that was my, I think that they're like a sea cucumber with a lamprey mouth is how mm. I kind of saw that working. Yeah. But and I feel like they have a shy halud have to have like a pretty solid kind of role in like Arrakis's ecosystem, other than just producing that good fuel drug. So it's like it, you know, this makes sense. Yeah, they're I mean, like if, cleaning the sand. Yeah, yeah, if they're eating, what did I just say? 
sand plankton? Yes. Sand plankton. Yeah. And which I just this. two different sources said yeah. sand plankton. Okay, mm-hmm. so then that would that's kind of what they're doing. Yeah. 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 So they're yeah, like they, filter feeding through the sand. Yes. Yeah. Golly. So they're giant sea cucumbers. Yes. That's great. But then it's but then what's interesting is then why are they so mad about us getting that good spice? Well, you they know, don't want you messing with their poop. That's, yeah, it's gross. I guess so. I guess, yeah, silly question. You're right. <laughs> it's that baby juice too, right? Yeah, like you, I guess if so. you, yeah, you're messing with you their get babies. The good, the good spices by touching their larvae. Mm-hmm. They don't want that. So I will say that's kind of where this falls apart. Is that sea cucumbers because they're um, echinoderms, so they're related to like sea stars. They have a similar life cycle to those, so they have these little like free floating larvae that look nothing like sea cucumbers, mm. really. It's more like a nematode, I would say, in terms of their life cycle. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just, I do really like the idea of watching Dune and thinking about it as a giant it's sea a cucumber. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very good. Which, if anybody listening has not had any hands-on experience with a sea cucumber, please run. Do not walk to mm-hmm. your nearest aquarium yeah. and go to that touch pool and touch a sea cucumber. <laughs> it's amazing. That good cuke. For sure. They're yeah. so good. If either of you touch a sea cucumber? I think so, yeah. Okay. Little, okay. Tide, little tide pool We got to go on a field trip yeah. because it's so great. <laughs> Next show, field trip. Yeah. Because we'll they recording live I mean, from Monterey Bay. <laughs> they also have this ability to like firm up their body wall and mm. then become more gelatinous. It's so cool. I loved working with them when I was uh, working in an aquarium. But anyway. Cool. um, Yeah. So those are our three critters. Yes. Any uh, parting thoughts, any specific things that we talked about that's going to, like, stick in your brain for the next week? Like, what, did you learn anything particularly disturbing or fun or cool? Oh, the bees. The bees, (laughs) honestly, the first thing I thought was the bees. made me real sad, sad because that's real life. So I will, if that is what's what's kind of sticking in both of your craws right now, um, there's a zombie study so you can google Ooh. zombie and if you ever think that you see any bees that are acting erratically you can actually report them Ooh. it's part of this uh this conservation project so they can track the zombie so that they we can try to help save the bees because there are they are kind of in trouble so. so is this not a um and i i'm sorry if you mention this mm. if we eliminated these jerk flies mm-hmm. yeah does it mess up the ecosystem or is this just jerks being jerks? So I, oh, that's question. a great question. So my understanding is that probably because of climate change, but for whatever reason, these flies are much wider spread than they used to be. Mm. And the zombie infections are much more prevalent than they used to be. Mm. And so also the fact that when you have a species that's, or a type of animal that's already in trouble, having additional stressors on that is bad. So right. even if, let's say, the flies were at the same concentrations they were always, the fact that we're messing with bees in so many other ways means we want to try to reduce the stress on the bee system in any way we can. Great. Right. So um, for one reason or another, we're worried about the flies now. Yeah. So <laughs> I hate them. Yeah. So, yeah, there's that. I am very excited to... Uh, Brian just downloaded which Pokemon on Oh, Pokemon... Leaf green, so it was like a remake of the Ridge with still okay. the Ridge components. Yes. Great, so I'm gonna play my first ever Pokemon game. Yes, yeah. on what the Switch? They just put the new ones. No, got a oh, got the emulator. Yeah, it's cool. an emulator. Yeah, yeah, yeah on our cool. iPhone. So I will be venturing into the world of Pokemon. Yeah, wow. get those good fights going. <laughs> Fight them animals. Can, is there any way to just observe animals, not capture them, and not fight? Yeah, if you don't ever want to get past the first, like basically Town, your really. front yard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I mean, you are, to be honest, I mean, the only reason you get a Pokemon in the in the first place is because uh, Professor Oak, the, you know. Oh, good. I was going to call him Professor Wood. <laughs> I mean, you're close enough. Yeah, uh, yeah that's fine. Dr. Prof- Wood. Professor Oak tasks you with cataloging as many yes, Pokemon as you possibly can. And it's a conservation do, project. Yes, I see. It is. Okay. And understanding. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. It's very much like, and you, you get good goodies if you have, you know, when okay. you collect. Okay. Uh, Catalog. Let's say catalog because it's a little. I feel like it, feel, it feels a little better than collecting, <laughs> collecting animals uh, for your menagerie. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think there's some good stuff to it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, yeah. I look forward to exploring that. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, do either of you have any plugs? <laughs> 
just keep on keeping on, guys. That's what I got to say. But I want to plug you, the listener. You're uh, great. Yikes. <laughs> uh, yeah, listen to Jesse and Wilder's Guide to Life. That's that's my thing. Find mm-hmm. it where all your podcasts are found. Great. And listen to This Week in Science, Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Pacific Time on YouTube or anywhere you find podcasts. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, hope to catch you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.